let's talk about the new benchmark that was set 30 trillion dollars in national debt um, will that be a wake-up call i doubt it the issue is until something really bad happens unfortunately it's not going to get addressed now the problem is it's not that america is going to default on the debt you can always pay it they can always print more money because it's unlike other countries america has the luxury of paying it back its debt in dollars so that's not the problem uh the problem would be slow growth the more indebted a country is the more deficits the more debt just you can um the growth, basically, what's really important to understand about it, economic growth is compounded, just like when you put, you know, when you, when they say like, oh look, you, if when you start at eighteen, put twenty dollars uh, into into stocks or whatever, and into investments, put twenty dollars a month, and by the time you're thirty or forty, it's going to be a million dollars. Well, the same concept applies. If the debt uh, slows down. Our economic growth, well, uh, you know, a few percentages or whatever. It's that's not going to matter within the, the the couple years that much. Not noticeable, but over, you know, fifty years, a hundred years, two hundred years, that's going to be because it's compounded. That's going to be. I mean, there's so many people that could have been lifted out of poverty and wouldn't be, or be so much poorer. They would, they won't be able to afford the health care they want or do whatever. So it's. Obviously, it's a you know slowing down of na of actual economic growth is a horrible thing, and that's what I think is going to lead to. But unfortunately, people are not really into economics, so they value the stuff they do see, any kind of freebies from the government, and the actual damage. Uh, it's pretty invisible, unlike with personal finances, you can rack up credit card debt and later on ruin yourself but then it's it's kind of clear who did it and who's to blame but here it's not the problem and one of the biggest issues here is that this 30 trillion that you know the republicans and conservatives actually fear monger about that's not the, that's just the tip of the iceberg u.s government has committed crazy financial fraud Basically, without letting any other real uh, CEO in jail, they actually have almost 100, by somebody's accounting, 150 to 200 trillion dollars in unfunded liabilities. But the what what America owes in Social Security and Medicare and stuff like that, that's not put into the calculated with the debt. Although it should be because this is obvious. There's a lot of you. We can calculate the amount of people that are retiring. This is very simple. And already the people that are alive today, they're going to be uh, using these services. So I'm just waiting for the shoe to drop. At, at one point in time, at what point in time, I mean, a lot of these politicians are just brushed it aside like, oh, that's just conservative talking points. But when will be the day where they're like we got to level with you you know our country is uh our country doesn't have tax doesn't bring in enough revenue these social security or what a medicare is underfunded we need to raise taxes we need to cut benefits both so i'm just waiting for that to happen um of course of course a politician will never admit to that until it's absolutely necessary because the other another politician can say oh that the debt's not a problem and then they'll get elected so there you go uh reason.com usually a voice of reason here <laughs> but uh, let's get into the article here uh national america's national debt exceeded 10 trillion for the first time ever in october 2008 uh, it talks a little bit of the history about Trump and North Korea. It wasn't too long ago. And I guess, what was the debt there? 
Oh, 20 trillion. When when Trump was a uh, tweet fighting with the uh, North Korea, that was 20 trillion. Um, now we have little we have a little COVID uh, pandemic, and we're up to 30 trillion. And I think this is gonna. I'm sure next time I refresh this website is gonna be at 40. I mean, the the issue is here. It's it's gonna start compounding quickly. Uh, the speed in which the federal government has piled up the uh, third amount of 10 trillion IUs notes is truly remarkable. Yes, the response to the COVID-19 pandemic drove government borrowing and spending in stratospheric heights. But, I mean, here's the thing. There are a couple countries that are in more debt as relative to, I mean, America's the biggest debtor by uh, dollar amount, but there are other smaller economies like Japan that have 10 times, 20 times more debt. But you don't want America to become a Japan because they have absolutely no economic growth, so they're screwed. So we're just trying to avoid that here. Um, the drivers of the debt are an unbalanced entitlement system uh, and the persistent gap between government spending and tax revenue, the result of more than two decades of poor decision making in Washington, where politicians for both parties have carelessly borrowed to pay for everything from foreign wars to $1,200 checks for most Americans, even though even those earning six figures during the pandemic. And I just got reading an article by Jacobin saying that uh modern monetary theory is okay because these um these wise politicians and people at the federal reserve they're gonna raise the taxes properly every time they're going to be inflation but you can just see right here that it's been decades of of spending too much and under taxing If the growing debt doesn't trigger a default or other crisis, it would have material impact on Americans' futures. Higher levels of debt are correlated with lower levels of future economic growth. In no small part because the amount of money that must be siphoned out of the economy to pay the interest on the debt will keep getting larger. Every dollar used to service the debt is a dollar that can be used to invest in new technology, pay workers, or save for next rainy day. Higher levels of debt also make it more difficult for policymakers to combat inflation, which is eroding away Americans' paychecks and savings faster than any point in the past 40 years. All true. The 30 trillion debt is jaw-dropping number. That's real cause of concern. Maya McGinnis, President of Co Committee for Responsible Federal Budget. <laughs> There's a committee like that. A nonpartisan group that advocates a balance in the budget, tells the Wall Street Journal. It's the result of both borrowing for really important uh, crises, most notably the COVID pandemic, but also trillions of, trillions of borrowing for no reason other than politicians have stopped being willing to pay the bills. Aside from McGinnis and her small band of allies, there's little recognition in Washington that the debt is a problem. That's, an, that's another problem when the national debt uh, take past 10 trillion 20, 2008 it became a major talking point in that year's presidential campaign that's thirty thousand dollars for every man woman and child soon to be president barack obama said during campaign event in nebraska that year that's irresponsible that's <laughs> unpatriotic Yeah, later after federal spending exploded during the Great Recession, the Tea Party movement popped up to demand fiscal responsibility from Obama and Congress. The result were mixed. Sequestration, temporary budget caps, slowed runaway spending even as they didn't reverse it until Republican-controlled Congress under President Donald Trump abandoned the effort and jacked up spending, of course. And how many people are left of the Tea Party. Probably a few, but not many. And was the Tea Party, what would have happened if they were just stuck to fiscal issues about slowing government debt or slowing government spending? 
Um, they probably overstretched themselves and just fell apart. America has now borrowed an average of seven billion per day for the past. Uh, stuff like this doesn't it doesn't matter. I mean, doesn't. Uh, and while while neither party is serious about reining in the debt, both are responsible for a pandemic era spending binge that was entirely financed with National's, National's credit card. While some of the 5.2 trillion emergency pandemic spending was justifiable response to a once-a-generation crisis, much of it was wasted, as all government spending is. States received hundreds of billions of dollars budgetary aid, many cases now running huge surplus. Yes, and uh, Gavin Newsom in California is going to give it away as just checks <laughs> to bolster his uh, electoral base. Direct checks are supposed to tie over employees. Those uh, workplaces were shattered by COVID. Also went to people earning six figures while working from home. Every dollar borrowed and spent as part of last year's $1.9 trillion relief bill is estimated to have generated only $0.37 cents economic activity. Yeah, that's the problem. Some of the charts that I've seen, the more you do this, the less economic activity you're going to generate. So in, in the future, you, you, the more deficit spending when you borrow money, it's gonna now it's generate seventy three cents. It's gonna go to fifty. It's gonna go to thirty. The debt won't stop rising when the pandemic passes. Entitlements, Social Security, and Medicare are in dire fiscal straits and will become even more costly as the average American gets older. Even without another unexpected crisis, deficit will exceed one trillion annually, which means the debt will continue growing in both the real terms and the percentage of the economy. That's concerning. The Congre Congressional Budget Office estimates that the gov federal government will add another twelve trillion by the of debt by uh, 2031. There's no way they're going to add so much more. It's compounded. Which means that it won't be long before we're looking back at this week and saying what it felt like just yesterday. The debt hit the $30 trillion mark. This $30 trillion is arbitrary number. It's, it's complete bogus. The real number is in the $150, $200 trillion range. And at that point, if you, I mean, if you... Add up all the 500 billionaires that are in America, it comes out to four trillion. So even if you confiscate all the billionaires' money, um, you can take Google, Apple, all those companies. You could. I, I wonder what the entire the the entire real estate assets of entire America probably won't cover the amount of money that's going to be needed to pay Social Security and Medicare in the future.